Is the Ultra Boost still relevant in 2022? Now, before I dive into the review of the Ultra Boost 22, let's talk about the must knows. The Ultra Boost 22 fits true to size and it costs about $190 USD or $250 Canadian. And it is currently on sale at the Canadian Adidas website for 40% off. Now, Adidas knows Ultra Boost is their flagship sneaker. It's a flex of their latest and greatest in technology of performance. They were flying off the shelves back in the heydays somewhere between 2016 to 2019. What made it popular besides Ye wearing the sneaker is that at the time, it was a brand new comfort technology and it was limited due to manufacturing setbacks. That in and of itself made people very curious as to what it was all about but couldn't get their hands on it. So how about now? How is it different? And how is it relevant in 2022? Well, I think that those who were fans of it back in the heydays are still fans of it today, including myself. But I'm certain that they aren't collecting it as religiously as before because it's much more available. Adidas knows this, and this is the exact reason why they came out with Ultra Boost 5.0 or DNA. It's the exact look of the popular models from the 1.0 to 4.0 but geared for everyday use. This is basically the formula of Adidas trying to make everyone happy. Adidas decided to split the Ultra Boost model into two different categories, one for performance and the other one for casual wear, but still under the performance brand. Now for the Ultra Boost 19 till 22, this is the Ultra Boost that is making sure that Adidas is still innovating and creating a sneaker that is cutting edge for runners. However, for the Ultra Boost DNA, which is the DNA 5.0 or the 1.0, those Ultra Boosts were revamped to make sure that they have everyday wear technology or implementation to make sure that it's comfortable for wearing every day without needing to focus on the runner. So a lot of people who were enthusiasts of the Ultra Boost, Adidas knew they weren't runners. This is the reason why they made sure to keep the model and the look of the original Ultra Boost from 1.0 to 4.0 while changing the prime knit and making it more comfortable, but also having cutting edge technology inside of Ultra Boost 19, 20, 21, and 22. So onto the review, how does Ultra Boost 22 compare to the 1.0 as a daily walking shoe? Now keep in mind, in today's video, we're not gonna be comparing the DNA Ultra Boost. We're gonna be comparing the Ultra Boost 22 to the OG 1.0 from back in the heyday. The 1.0 and 22 were both designed to be actually performance sneakers for running. The 22 has a reinforced upper with new recycled materials, allowing your feet to be locked down where it needs to be while still having an incredibly soft touch. However, the 1.0 is much more roomy with wider areas for your ball of your feet, but it's not so elastic. The 22, however, is much more narrower. The 22's back heel is amazing. They increase the density in the boost and it's not just all softness. It actually created a bit of rigidity, allowing to not feel like you can lose stability like the 1.0. The back heel area of the 22 is rounded off and you can tell it was to provide prevention of ankle rollover. The softness of the boost is less noticeable in the Ultra Boost 22 due to the density, I believe. And I can see this being an advantage if you're pounding your foot on the pavement as a runner. This bigger back heel, however, means that you can potentially catch your foot on staircase steps when you're going down it. Now the grip pattern on the Ultra Boost 1.0 is a minimal approach, but the 22 is definitely a science-based utilitarian approach. The collar on the 1.0 also has more structure than a 22, allowing the easier entrance of your foot where the 22 will need more intervention. The cage on a 22 is floating instead of attaching it directly to the sole. I think this has an advantage to allow the cage to adapt to certain movements, allowing that extra need of elasticity when your foot is at full flex. Now for my final thoughts, for the Ultra Boost 22, I don't recommend it to be a daily shoe for lounging around. Just like my review of the Alpha Bounce versus the Ultra Boost 1.0, I found the performance shoes are just not meant to be loungeable. It's most definitely a comfortable shoe for on the go and as a runner, but once you're sitting down there doing nothing with the shoe on, it feels tight and possibly gives you a bit of foot fatigue. Even the form of your toes bending upwards for the fluid motion of running is not a natural resting position for your foot. I would say if you want an Ultra Boost that is meant for casual wear, definitely take a look at the DNA Ultra Boost because it was designed for that. 
instead of the Ultra Boost 22. If you made it this far into this video, you must like my content. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and drop a hi or hello in the comment section below unless you have questions for me. Thanks for watching. This has been Billy Visuals. Y'all just got visualized and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.